Hello, Jesus loves you. Hi, my name is Michael Smith, and I'm going to share with you uh, some of the scriptures that I'm going to be reading this morning. Uh, what I'm about to read is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. There's a lot in here to chew on. I like this one. This is one of those uh, selections of verses where, you know, you could easily read this and just be like, oh, well, that's cool. Jesus has uh, come to let him know that he's back and that he's conquered death and they send him out and time to get some work done you know, you know that the doors were locked where the disciples were and Jesus still came and stood in their midst there is nothing that you can do in your life that can hold Jesus back from you what does that mean to me personally it means from the life that I've led that it didn't matter any of the things I had done in my past. Jesus was willing to be in my presence. He desires me. God created me out of love. Jesus desires my company. There's nothing you can do that will hold Jesus out of your life. You know, I've heard it before said that, oh, well, you don't know what I've done. You know, there's no way Jesus could love me. You're right, I don't know what you've done. But I do know that there was Paul, who was Saul. He was kind of making a living out of persecuting Christians. He killed Stephen, or at least commanded it or watched over it. And still, Jesus called him and made him enlightened him to be one of the greatest evangelists of the early church. Moses killed a man. Moses, you know, was in the throes of Egypt and grew up worshiping idols and, <clears throat> and the like. And still, God used him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery. Over and over again, when you read your Bible, you see how God takes men and women who maybe aren't from the uh, best walks of life, the most righteous walks of life, and uses them to do amazing things for him. All that God asks is that you are available. You know, where, you know, here we, we have the line, you know, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his, his side, you know, the, the piercings from the crucifixion, the piercings in his hands and his feet. And where he was uh, stabbed in the side with a spear to prove to them yeah it's me it's really Jesus see look this is what they did to me remember no one's gonna be perfect but I will tell you this if you decide to take up the title of being Christian people will watch you and your work your fruits as maybe the Bible would say, will be on display. For me, it's a double-edged sword. I like knowing the fact that people are watching me being a Christian because it helps me become a better Christian. Typically, when we sin, we're doing it when we think no one's watching. And so for me personally, knowing that I'm being watched, it helps me stay on the straight and narrow. 
I'm not gonna lie, I get tempted several times a day, every single day, and I'll think, ah, uh, I'm being watched though, sometimes, and I'm not just doing, I'm just not doing things because I think people are watching, but I've also learned the value in not doing sinful things, you know, the weird thing about sin is, is you know, it'll, sin takes something beautiful that God created and it just perverts it, like food, there's nothing wrong with food. But if you just devour food for the pleasure of eating food and become gluttonous, well, then that's sinful. You know? uh, same thing with uh, having possessions. There's no reason why you should feel bad about having things. You know, God gave us this beautiful world full of raw materials and land and, and, and just inescapable beauty. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when we focus our life and pervert it and live for the pursuit and gain, well, then we're getting greedy. And that's a sin. Same thing with lust. Sex. It's a beautiful thing. It's an act where two people can draw together and become closer in the relationship. And it's also for the purpose of bearing children. It's a beautiful thing. But when we pervert that and we use it just to satisfy our own selfish desires, it becomes lust. And it's a bad thing. Jesus wants to spend time with you. He wants to help you be the best you can possibly be. Why? Because His Father created you. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like if you bought the new iPhone or the new Samsung, you know, or whatever, whatever you prefer, phone-wise. And it would be like if you bought the brand new model and you decided to misuse it. Say you had this door at home that just wouldn't stay open when you opened it. So you used your new phone as a doorstop, crammed it under the edge it would probably work. You could probably use that phone for a lot of things. Problem is, is that's not what it was made for. We use our lives for a lot of things. Problem is, is sometimes the things that we use our lives for, that's not what, that's not what they were made for. You and I were made to share in divinity. We were made. We were made to share in God's love. What does that mean? Good question. I had somebody once explain it to me that sharing in God's divinity the way we were meant to would be like swimming carelessly in an ocean of pure love. That's what you were made for. That's what I am made for. We're in made to share in God's divinity where God is love we're made to immerse in that for eternity but we have free will and the choice is ours and with temptation it's not always easy and sometimes we will make the wrong choice but as Jesus says here whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Jesus loves to forgive. All that he needs is for you to come before him with a contrite heart, a truly remorseful heart, and he will forgive you. There is nothing you can do, there is nothing you can do that Jesus will not forgive. He's waiting for you. The rest of the saints and angels in heaven are waiting for you. They're rooting you on. And now it's time for you to go out and decide what you want to do. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, I love you so very much. I thank you for another day. 
in another realm of possibilities. Help walk with me this day and make the right choices. And for all of those out there with choices before them, be at their side and help them make wise choices as well. Surround us in compassion and mercy so that we can see past the tragedy in this world and see your love. Help us to rise up and be the champions that you know that we can be. For in you, we will only find true peace. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> you have a wonderful day.